Hello, and welcome back to our LoRa Wireless Technology video series. Now let's take a look at some of the hardware and software bits from ST and others and get started deploying your latest wireless IoT creation. Perhaps the most popular platform is the latest LoRa Discovery Board integrating the Murata LoRa module, which includes an STM32L072, SX1276 radio, and all of the supporting components needed. There's also an Arduino Uno header for adding sensor shields such as this IKS01A1 motion and environmental data shield. Lots of great MEMS technology from ST there. Buttons and LEDs, a AAA battery connector for running the board standalone, and of course an onboard ST-Link debugger. Now the STM32L072 on this discovery board has 192K of flash, 20k of RAM, plenty of memory and horsepower for the compact LoRaWAN stack as well as your IoT application. Support is less than $50 through distribution. There are also standalone LoRa radio shields that can be added to a variety of standard nucleo boards. The other hardware piece you may want to consider is the concentrator, such as this multi-tech conduit 8-channel PicoCell gateway. This converts LoRa to Ethernet or LoRa to a cell modem if so equipped. We'll discuss gateways more in the next video. Now that we've touched on the hardware, what about the LoRaWAN software? Let's head over to ST.com and search for LoRa. We see a variety of links here for different hardware and software tools. The first link is our LoRa Discovery Kit we mentioned previously. Lots of good information here. I would recommend downloading the user manual, which includes schematics. There's lots of hardware resources, bill of materials, Gerber files. And at the bottom, we can click on the iCube LoRaWAN embedded software link. If we click Get Software at the bottom, if you have a myst.com account, we can download the stack. Once we've installed and unzipped the firmware library, notice there are four main LoRa applications. The ping pong demo is used for taking two LoRa hardware boards, discovery boards or the Nucleo combinations, and using basic LoRa modulation to talk to each other. The AT master and slave demos are for setting up a, a host board and using a LoRa board as a network processor. And the most common, the EndNode application, is used for incorporating the LoRaWAN stack on top of your main application in one project. For each of these applications, there are three targets for the Kyle, ARM compiler, IAR, or GNU compiler. Within each toolchain folder, there are five different hardware targets for different Nucleo boards, as well as our discovery board. Now once we've opened our project there's a few things we need to do to get our device set up for the US 915 megahertz ISM band. First thing we need to do is go into the global compiler project options and change the processor define which will probably default to region EU868 change that to region US 915 or region US915 underscore hybrid. The hybrid is used for the 8-channel PicoCell gateway, such as our multi-tech conduit. For a commercial 64-channel gateway, just leave it region underscore US915. In the hw underscore conf.h file, there are a few pound define switches we can select for additional debug and trace information on our virtual COM port console via the ST link. We can disable low power mode which is useful while debugging. And if we're using the the IKS 01A1 or A2 sensor shield, we can uncomment the, the defined for sensor enabled and use actual sensor data in our demonstration project here. Walking through the main.c file, there's also a few other pound defines for 
setting up the transmit duty cycle. This is in milliseconds, so our example here, every five seconds, our device will transmit a LoRa packet up to the gateway. ADR on for using adaptive data rate, we'll leave that at one. If we want our message, messages confirmed by the, the network server, we'll enable this. That'll act back the reply. And then in the commissioning.h file, there are some pound defines we use to commission our device. There are two different mechanisms, either over the air activation, which we will be using, so we set this to one, which should be the default, or activation by personalization. This is if we know our network session key and application session keys already. For over the air activation, we'll need a device EUI, an application EUI, and an application key. And these will be provided by our network and application server providers, which we'll discuss later. Full source code for the LoRaWAN stack is available in the middleware's LoRa folders shown here. Feel free to peruse the different source and header files in the project. Go ahead and use the default DVUI, AppEUI, and AppKey settings. And go ahead and build your project. Make sure you don't get any errors. We'll come back and change those at a later point in the next video.